We good? You gonna do the you gonna do the takeout? Oh, can I go? You gonna start? Yeah, I can do it. Now let's see what you got. Is it ready? <clears throat> ready to go? What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's episode of the Comeback Couples Podcast. I am your host, Kendra Jennison, with my amazing, sexy, hot, fierce, strong husband, Mark Jennison. Yes. Gosh, did a pretty good job on that. That's what I do. See, that's the whole, that's what's really cool about this is like systems and process and duplicatable. I don't even need to do this anymore. It could be all you. Maybe. So you can just bring home the bacon from now on. Well, I don't know about that. Why not? I know about it. I mean, if I had to, could I? For sure. Yeah. What would you do? I would do this. Just do the podcast? No. I would do I'm a comeback. You would do I'm a comeback? Mm-hmm. Would you get on the calls and do it the way I do it? I would try my hardest. What would you do better? I would definitely, I could be just because I'm a much like I'm an A, B, C, D, E, F type of individual human being. So I'm like organized, process, this, this. And you, which is awesome, are just not that way at all. So what am I? You're very squirrely. Fuck squirrely. But where, but where you trump me every single time is you are like, you know what? We don't need to do any, let's just do it. Fuck the processes, fuck the, fuck the organization, we're just gonna go for it. Me, I'm like, I can't do this until I know everything is ready and in place. So ultimately, <clears throat> that's why you're the man, that's why you're the hoss boss. Yeah, so actually that, that brings us to the topic of today's conversation. As you can see through the background, maybe you can or you can't, we're in a whole new environment. Yeah, yeah. we're in a whole new environment. So I'm just looking around right now. Actually, we'll tell the story in a second about why I actually chose to get this thing. But, um, to touch base on what you just said there uh, about how you have to have to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, like you have to get all these things lined up, yeah. right? <coughs> Excuse me. You have to get all these things lined up. And while uh, one of my specialties is that while people are fucking trying to line everything up, they're working on their logo. You've already they're, done it. They're like, yeah, they're on their yeah. logo. They're like getting their business card. They're thinking about what they're going to do. I'm already got cash collected in my pocket. I was, I, I, it's the, the most true statement. Cause I remember even when I was doing my own coaching thing, I was so stressed about everything. Like I said, just having to be a certain way. And you're like, no, fuck that. We're literally launching it in three hours. And I tell you what, in three hours, I already had clients. I already had women to coach. I was like, this is why you and I are so like, so great. I've I've done that with everything I've ever done because there's like an immense amount of like, satisfaction in taking an idea and a concept and then watching it be monetized relatively quickly. Yeah. However, it does bite me in the ass at times. Right. Cause then so, after, after you, you've got it all set and you can sell the shit out of anything, then it's like, okay, now I got to go back and make it run like a well-oiled machine a little bit here. Cause I didn't do that yet. Yep. And that's why I want to make so. sure that we, does she need to adjust this or is she good? Just pull up just a little bit. Pull it up. You got to be like right here. Am yep. I good? Yep. You're good. I think. Oh, shit. Sorry. Better. Well, we're going to leave this in the podcast. See, we're having new beginnings over here. She good? So the topic that I want to talk, talk about today was new beginnings, right? And since we're in this office, this is a new beginning for us. It is. Um, which actually we took, when did we take ownership or stewardship, whatever this thing, I think March 1st, 2023. I was going to say a couple weeks ago, yeah, a week ago. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I think we signed the lease last week and then we got this thing. But it's deeper than that on the new beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, last week's conversation, we talked about how you're trying to dump me. Remember that? Never. It's like she get pauses. No, she wasn't trying to dump me. How you, I had so much stress, so much pressure, so many things. I actually was sitting right in this chair, um, fuck, two hours ago, three hours ago. I just needed a place to do my coaching call with Garrett. So noon, noon to one. <clears throat> and we were talking about the energetic shifts. He's been reading my stacks and some of the stuff about like the release and the energy and protecting and, and where I'm at and some of the stuff that you... I wrote down about the things that you said in the conversations we had in Phoenix's basketball game in the, in the parking lot. And like, it's, it's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like everything is an opportunity for us. So like a big deal for, for me this past week was like, yo, I would the fucking old, I don't care what it costs me. I don't care. I don't financially care what it costs me. I'm fucking over it. I'm moving forward. Right, like what I mean by that is I don't care what I've what's got me to this point. I just had a conversation with your sister Amber about um, you know some I haven't even tell you this, but some fucking shit that got fucked up on some stuff we owe money. I said, you know what? Fucking pay it. I'm fucking moving on. I don't give a fuck. Yep, be right? done. Yeah, I just want to be done. 
I want to be done with people. I want to be done with toxicity. I want to be, I want this fucking energy. I want this beginning that I have right now for me. Yep. And it really boils down to our relationship as well because the energy that I take to the marketplace and I mean Ryan could probably admit to it or not admit but submit or even conversation converse about it is like the the working with me the past seven days has been different hasn't it Ryan massively different for, for those of you guys who didn't hear Ryan just said yeah Mark you're God but <laughs> just kidding but the new beginning came because you put a it wasn't all you but it was you like all how, how do I put this Having Garrett become my coach for the past few months mm -hmm. brought me to a place where I finally did something or got myself to believe, to release these like shackles of just my worth. Yeah. Some self-limiting beliefs. It's not even self-limiting beliefs because I, I mean, you could call self-limiting beliefs. It sure. was almost like a prison. Like mm -hmm. I fully feel like my life in certain aspects was a fucking prison sentence. Sure. From, from the time I was, and it's just this prison inside of my mind. And obviously it didn't help with the amount of drugs I did, the amount of drinking I did. And, you know, there's definitely some repercussions from, from doing that. But we got to this point where, you know, I was feeling this pressure. And I think I said it today when I was on the call with him. I said, he said, what, what, what changed? What shift? I said, I finally was able to release myself from the self-imprisonment because it wasn't... It, your comment was uh, how to put this, I'm trying to put this in like great context, but it's difficult. Your comment was I lost my dad. I lost my brother to alcohol. I lost my dad to alcohol. Now I'm about to lose my brother, my husband to alcohol, but he's not drinking, mm -hmm. but you don't drink. Therefore I can't, that was your, those are not the words you ended up speaking them to me. That's not what came through on the text message is either. Hey, you fucking get your shit together or I'm out and not in such clear words, yeah, but, but like, basically right. Like just, and, and I don't think you really want to leave me because I'm fucking awesome, but that's not, that was not the point. The point is that there was a pain and a suffering that was coming from the amount of pain and suffering that I put myself through for fucking 42 years or we'll call it 32 years. Mm -hmm. So Garrett asked me, he's like, what was that shift? Like what happened? And I finally got myself to a place to realize that it wasn't the alcohol. It wasn't, it wasn't the drinking. It wasn't the team. It wasn't you. It wasn't anybody other than it was myself and these self imprisoned thoughts. And it really boiled down to me carrying a bunch of fucking financial pressure since the time I was a kid to some money and some attachments that I fucking was taught and raised and were bestowed upon me that I finally got myself to let go, but it had to come down to losing the very things that I loved most in this world, which ultimately would be you, the girls, and mm -hmm. Phoenix. And even though Phoenix would stay with me or if we separated, I mean, it would be very difficult. I w it, we would all lose to some degree. Right, that's our family. Yeah. It's our family, right? I, mm -hmm. I'm about to, and, and the, the, the conversation I had inside of this fucked up, twisted head is like, you know what? They're probably all better off without me. I'm just gonna keep fighting. Yep. But then there was, a split brief second where I said, nope, you're fucking listening to the wrong person. Yep. Right? Like you've got to get something figured out. You already know what you need to do. You've known what to do for fucking years. It's time for a new, be a new beginning. It's time for a new direction. Yeah. And I can honestly say having that conversation with you and being just so raw and vulnerable and honest with you about like, listen, something has to freaking change. And I did take it to a very drastic but i truly meant that in my heart I, I truly meant like i cannot watch this thing kill you i can't continuously say like hey this has to change and, and kind of having these conversations with you and you knowing that and then still keeping yourself shackled and chained to those thoughts because that's exactly what was happening i could talk till i was blue in the face to you about things that needed to change and still inside of your brain even though you knew you couldn't let it go for whatever reason so i did take it to a very drastic you know, but I was so serious. And in the, in that moment was probably whether you, re, what you, you do probably recognize it, but it was one of the largest growth patterns for you because typically old Mark, like you said, you already had those thoughts of, oh, my family's better without me. This is what she thinks. And like, fuck this. I just gotta, you know, and instead you took a completely different pattern of growth and you're like, took a step back. You're like, Jeez, I know, I know something has to change. I cannot think the same way, I cannot act the same way. I have to do something completely different. And now that you have, it's 
peace it's light it's everything is just so good right now it's the exact same feeling that i feel the day that i decided i shouldn't say it took me a little bit of time like july 27 2015 when i stopped drinking i was shaky and yeah. didn't feel good but the decision after a couple of weeks felt so fucking good. I was empowered again. I found like happiness in the sunrises, mm -hmm. happiness in the sunset, happiness in watching Phoenix just play at the time. It was fucking yep. five years old, right? Happiness in my job at the time I was selling cars. Just, just like at this place where I was like, create, create, create. And that's what built us here. Yeah. And what, what happened though, and in, in, in your mentality is you have such the mentality of just like, go, go smash through, smash through gas, gas. Like I just got to fucking keep working harder than anybody else in the fucking room. And I will come out on a winner on top. And what was so amazing is although I have no doubt that that's true. Like I, I've never doubted your work ethic and, and that you will continuously work no matter the hardships that's inevitable. And you, and, and I know that you know that, but what an amazing and sometimes, you know, like eureka moment for you to be like, hmm, <laughs> maybe I should step back a little bit, become more peaceful, become more all the things that, you know, instead of like the smash, the, the Hulk, the anger, the whatever, it was like, okay, I got to approach this from a completely different angle. And you did. So the smash, the smash and like move forward mentality <laughs> actually is self-hatred. Yeah, for sure. Right? Mm -hmm. Is self-hatred disguised in action and activity? Yeah. Because what I'm doing, action and activity, and maybe when I was drinking, it was actually like destroying mm -hmm. activity. But then I just was able to take the very, you know, like I, I teach people how to gain control of their thoughts or emotions or actions over drinking by going obsessed in their life. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very obsessed at what I do too. But the self-hatred at that point, when you do it and you're smashing and smashing and smashing, you're still allowing these tentacles of, of pain, these tentacles of anger, these tentacles of frustration, of anxiety, of fucking self-hatred, mm -hmm. but you just keep working and working, working. at least for me, right? That's yeah. how I operated. Um, and the, the, the question to me was, you call it a eureka moment or self a massive moment of self growth, but like I, I preach and teach who are you? What do you want? Why do you want it? Yeah. And I continuously ask myself that question every single day, even when I'm down in the lowest parts of my moment, like the lowest moments of my life. But at that moment I took a step back and I literally asked myself like, what do I even, do I really want to be married? Do I really want to run that? I'm a comeback. Do I really want to be a dad? I mean, these are like, <clears throat> most men will shun away from even asking those questions, but I literally have those questions. Yeah. Not because I don't want them, but because I need to answer them. Sure. Because I'm, I'm not afraid of what people think about me. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, as what was happening to me was as much as I'm not afraid for people, what they think about me, I started doing things to make other people think highly of me by putting them and carrying their fucking weight. And I found myself in this place of, like I said, this self-hatred and this just anxiety ridden life where I'm like, dude, it's time for a new direction. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. So like, I want to give value. I know we talked last week about alcohol. This can be specifically for alcohol. This can be in a relationship. This can be going to the gym. This can be um, even as simple as like taking a new direction in parenting. Yeah. Like, how many times do we have to do it? Like where we sit down, we have conversations about well, we gotta do this different. Yep. Right? So I don't think it always has to come down to some fucking big massive like It doesn't moment like that. I just thought that I just thought in general that was such a pivotal moment in our relationship and in the business and in life and and in divine timing, if you will, because spring is approaching, like just so many things are now new beginnings new blossomings and I just couldn't help but think like that was such the universe's way of giving us perfect timing and everything but yeah you're right um and this is obviously like a, a much larger scale of, of you know I, severity I, I guess I if think you will. this is a great point though for people that are struggling out there mm -hmm. I want them to understand like I'm going to just lay the facts we're multi-millionaires mm -hmm. we're deeply in love mm -hmm. Our fucking kids are very, very happy. And awesome. And awesome. Uh, and, and we're good people. Yeah. Right? I work fucking hard. Very hard. I do things behind the scenes. We do things as a, as a couple for people that people don't even know about. Mm -hmm. Yet, my world was imploding around me. Yep. Which caused a new rebirth. But the one thing that I had to do, and you did alongside me, was... We just didn't quit. Yep. And I, and I, 
for people like just to give some value or what I think is a great way to approach any new beginning or new season or new path in your life. Even for me, and this is a small thing to me, it's a small thing, but with the new seasons and new changes and everything new coming up, I've been taking in a lot more hands-on approach and making business decisions with you, which is a really big deal to me. I, I find so much happiness and purpose and building like together. Truly, this is like you and I hand in hand. We're doing it together all in and it's awesome. And what I decided to do very, very intentionally, even in the little things that I tell myself every day. You know, I, for the longest time, I even still catch myself doing it now. It would say, I'm not a morning person. I would hit snooze. I am like, okay, it's still dark. I don't have to get up yet. The kids don't have to get up yet. I do like, to, I do get up before the kids have coffee, quiet time, you know, you have like 620, 630. Yeah. But what I started to do now every single morning is my alarm goes off or I get up before my alarm because the sun is coming up and I'm just getting up with it. And I'm intentionally telling myself that, okay, I'm a morning person. I'm starting to, with all these new shifts in life, I know that I cannot continuously think and act the same way as Kendra did before. It doesn't mean I have to automatically take on like all these new ideologies and be like somebody I'm not, but I can just start implementing all these little things into my life. Like I, like I said before, would tell myself, oh, I'm not a morning person. Just let me be quiet. And now every day I get up, I'm like, okay, I'm a morning person. I'm going to start my day this way. I'm going to do this new routine in the gym. My, my entire physique is changing now just by implementing all these different things into my life and taking it with such a severity that maybe I just had a little bit more lax before, I guess, which is not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. What do you think? Um, what do you think shifted inside that? I just, I think there's just, uh, and we've talked about it before, new levels to who I want to be, to who you want to be. And, and to me, how I'm interpreting everything happening in our life and for everybody, it's differently. Um, new levels require new commitments, require new disciplines and, I'm taking on those challenges and I want to meet them and I want to I want to be great. I want to be good. I want to make sure that when you and I are talking business that I'm not fucking sounding like an idiot and that I'm learning and that I'm asking questions and that my physique is matching that and that my parenting is matching that. Like it's very, it's all very. That's been a big one I've seen for you in the past couple of weeks is like your physique and past month or so, especially as the podcast gains popularity and yeah. <clears throat> people are, we're with more people and the fame and just the status and people I, I noticed it. I never said anything, but I noticed like you cleaned up your diet a little bit more. Not you always eat really good and you're in good shape, but like clean up your diet. Yeah. You added some cardio. You like <laughs> doing a little more detailed. Obviously spring's coming. You're going to be outside more and do more. But I really thought that was pretty awesome because it makes me, it helps me. Yeah. Right. Like our whole, our whole life changed because you're the appearance matters. It does. And it makes, and, and aside from even appearance. I look good all the time. You do. I agree. <laughs> and even aside from like appearance, yes, um, having a, a visual appetite, if you will, for each other is, is massive. But even in just how I feel in myself, gives me more confidence to make the business decisions with you. It gives me more confidence just all around in my parenting and in, in everything. And with the new beginning that has started with us, I made sure to tell myself that, hey, Every day that I wake up, that old Kendra is, is no more, right? That doesn't mean I don't have lapses and I have to remind myself, all right, hey, like this is what you used to do, the old you used to do. This is where the new you is going. So I'm just really conscious and self-aware and intentional with those things. And I love, love, love it. In the past couple of weeks, <clears throat> since we're on this new beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the March 1st, 2023, I looked at you, I came out or in a towel in the bathroom or I came out of the house into the kitchen. I said like, this is it for us. Like we're going all in. All in. Like we've, we talk about going all in. What, what's the possibilities? What does it look like when you're all in? Like we're taking this, the money that I make from this vertical, we're going to put in this vertical, this vertical. This, and I mean all in, we're going, we're already all in on our life. Everything about our love right. and our relationship. Like I don't think I could be any more all in, in <laughs> yeah. on you unless I fucking climb my head up your asshole and just like live there every day. That's real good. You probably love that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I don't think I could be more all in. I mean, could I be more present at moments? Yes, but honestly, that doesn't come with the territory when you're trying to do what we're trying to do. I was gonna say, yeah. I It takes a lot for me, but you balance that out and you bring me back. So your presence is always very much reciprocated and appreciated. <laughs> 
But when I say we're going all in, we're on a run. Our plan in the next three years is to sell our business for multi nine figures. Yep. Right. And we're going to go to all these different diversified portfolios, do all these different things, scale it up and then disappear. And for the first time, I shouldn't say the first time I've seen moments and snippets, of it. snippets of it. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, finally, after fucking five years of daily obsessive, telling you where we're going, telling you where you're going, telling you where you're going. I still tell you, but I don't need to tell you because you see it and you fucking, re you actually are telling it back to me. I'm, I'm waking up. I'm, I'm talking about yeah, it. I'm waking up and I'm showing up as that. I, I actually texted you the other day and I said, um, it was something along, we were talking about going all in and we're just so excited and, and it just feels, I, I feel like really everything right now has just lined up. Like the stars have aligned, the, uh, the sun is shining, everything is blooming and you and I are like direct path to where the fuck we're going. It's just never been more clear to me. And I texted you the other day, I said, thank you for never giving up on me. And you're like, you, you responded, you said, I would never give up on you. And I didn't mean in the sense, because I never, I never thought you would give up on me, but I just- I'm very literal though, like black, like, what the fuck I know, I know, but I- I say something back, I'm like, what the fuck is she like, I was never going to give up on you. I was just going to continue. And I, and I, I knew that, but what I, what I really meant was, it would have been too easy for you to say, hey, this is where we're going once or twice. And then you just do what a lot of gentlemen do and just say, all right, fuck it. <laughs> doing it on my own. You know what I mean? You never did that. It was a continuous building me up, continual um, casting our future. It was a continual like, hey, this is what we're doing. Hey, Kendra, I'm inviting, like, you got to come here. I want to, can you sit down in this meeting with me? And that was five years in the making. And I, I, even though that's still relatively quick because I, I have always had an eager, I want to learn type of mentality. I was like, dang, I'm just so impressed with you. And I'm just so everything. I want to know what you want to know because I want to be your equal, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you always also say to me, you're my equal and everything. <laughs> and I was just so grateful, like I said, for, for me texting you that, like, thank you for never giving up on me because now we're here. Yeah. I could talk business with you. I could talk this, 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 and I can hold my own. And that is such a comfortable and fun and amazing place to be in because I wouldn't have been ready for that months ago, years ago, I just wasn't at a mental capacity. I, I didn't have enough confidence in myself, especially in the business essence that I'm talking about. And now I do, and I'm ready. And that's because you were a man of your word and you did exactly what you said you were going to do, which was every day, multiple times a day, casting the future, including me, being an amazing husband, being an amazing father, somebody that I can truly count on every single day. And we wouldn't be where we're at if you never did that. And I don't even think that was like work to you. Maybe it was. No, it, was it was intentional. I know that. It was but. intentional. It was, it was my. It was a decision of. How, it was a standard that I lived my life by. Yeah. And it paid off. I'm just letting you know. Like it. It paid I, off. I think it will. I think it's paid off for you, right? I can see the growth inside of it. I think it's paying off around. You can see it like with the team. You mm -hmm. can see the guys that are rising yeah. around us. Um, but my intentions were never ever to give up. It was always to just fully pour everything I had into you yeah. because the truth is I am a loner. You are. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm really a loner besides the small company I keep. Mm -hmm. And I I know you always wanted me to have friends and like these, and I know I've got some friends, but like I'm cool with just be hanging out with you. Because I'm so. Because <laughs> you're so cool. <laughs> but my, you're so cool. That's her favorite, favorite, favorite. Uh, Put it. What am I trying to say? It's your favorite um, compliment. Compliment. Sorry, I was gonna say apology. Your favorite compliment. Um, but but why why am I sharing about the the new beginning? Is because there doesn't have to be some big big fucking biblical moment and pain. Like if I could help someone on this podcast, it would be to like understand and respect where you're at mm -hmm. right now and make the change like in a blink of an eye. Yep. You don't have to get. You don't have to hit rock bottom. I'm a very, very, very hard learner. Yes, you are. Right? Extremely hard learner. You, you wait until you hit rock bottom 99% of the time before you're like, hmm, shit, I should probably it's, switch something up. There's because, because it's not rock bottom because there's only one rock bottom for me and that's death. Yeah. Right? Yeah, great point. So like sometimes I think I'm actually flirting with how close and how painful I could get there. Like right now today, I feel like I'm on, on, on top of the world. Right, these past couple of days, <clears throat> do I have a lot of things to improve on? Absolutely, we all do. Yeah, but since we're we're forging forward in a new beginning, 
And it, since we're talking a little bit about business, I let you make a decision this week. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Business decision. So, um, yeah, you brought me on two meetings, two conversations, and you basically looked up at me and you're like, all right, hey, like, what do you want to do? And I said, we're going to go through with it. We're going to wire the money and we're going to go all in. It felt so right to make this business decision, decision that we did. I just feel like there's so much clarity and so much so much a path that is being carved for us and it's never been more clear. And I think you knew it was the right, I think you felt like it was the right decision. I was really confident in my response with making the decision. There was no, oh, uh, and I'm a very sometimes indecisive individual, but I I'll was- I'll let you all even come all the way down to like how, how you want to pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> you did. And I was like, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to go with them and we're going to do this. And this is, this is our game plan. This is our exit plan. And this is what we're doing. And you're like, I like it. Let's do it. Yep. And the reason that I did that is because one of the things that I'm focused on as we move forward is <clears throat> if I can't delegate, delegate some thoughts and decisions to the person I love the most next to me, mm -hmm. I'm going to hold on to everything. And, and that's, I mean, I knew you were going to be excited about what we did, but when I'm, when I'm forging forward, I'm trying to be a leader from a different place. Yep. Right. And the new beginning for me, even though some people have had to step away for a little while and maybe they'll come back, maybe they won't. Mm -hmm. And I'm going forward and some people are able to go with me. I want to be able to coach. I want to be able to lead. I want to be able to push. I want to be able to love. I want to be able to lead. I want to be able to, to teach all the people around me in a different fashion. So when I looked at this new beginning as things were falling apart, and this is kind of the whole premise of the, the podcast that I wanted to, to bring out is that things will feel like they are falling apart right before they start falling together. I love it. And it's happened over and over and over in my life. Yep. What I've done awful, like straight up. And I, this is like, you haven't done what I've done, so it's not, I'm not, I'm just gonna hold the mic for a second. Every fucking time that it got harder and harder and harder, and then some big ginormous fucking biblical breakthrough happens, which it does every time, mm -hmm. <clears throat> my mistake, and if I can give man or woman on this thing, one piece of advice is that I would let it consume me. Yep. I will let it consume me to the point where it took from me and I would become, I would either lose weight, I would gain weight, I would get off track, my face would be beat red, mm -hmm. my, I would bleed stomach ulcers and I would just fucking find myself like wallowing in this despair in this pit of just pain. There's no other way to, no way to put it, just mm -hmm. absolute pain because I felt like at that moment, and this is like an entrepreneur's curse, I'm not the only one that thinks like this, we just keep going and going and going and you get so obsessed and so addicted to trying to solve the problem that you can't even get yourself out. And one thing I, if I could change one thing about my life, I've had this happen to me, <clears throat> fuck, I don't know, 10, 15 times in my life where like it'd get really, really tight, really, really hard. And then it would, exp it would expand. And maybe I'll take my advice on the next time. Hopefully or I'll have to go back and listen. To this is that I would tell myself, don't allow yourself to be so fucking consumed because this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. As hard as it is right now inside your head, it's not that hard on the outside. Yeah, exactly. And, and I've lived it, right? This was with drinking. This is, this is in letting go of people you care about. This is in fucking business failures. This is in business wins. This is like, I mean, this is in like even fitness and athletics, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there was a time I was 5% body fat, absolutely fucking jacked. And like, it, it, it was so fucking painful. And all of a sudden the reward on the other side was just beautiful yeah but what happens and this is in in relationship in alcohol in anything is that people they get consumed with it and then they give up yep. they give up they start picking fights with one another yep right <clears throat> so in the relationship it would have been very easy be very easy for you to judge me <clears throat> very easy for you to look down on me very easy for you to look at me like what is he doing very easy for you to be like this guy loves me, but like, where is he? I know he's here, mm -hmm. but like, where the fuck is he? But we didn't. We kept going. We kept going. And that comes because we had a future in mind. And you say it's because I actually like kept on you over the past five years. I don't know that that's the case. I think it's just that we literally made some commitments on the day we got married. August 22nd, 2019. And I fucking stood by him. Like yeah. I wasn't fucking around. And, and, and I think too many men 
specifically when it comes to making a commitment to yourself, whether it's with putting down a bottle or, or fucking cutting toxic people out of your life or just making those tough decisions, you lack the commitment required to fucking face them. So I, I gave kind of two parts there, right? One, when it gets painful, don't beat the shit out of yourself. Mm -hmm. It will get this too shall pass. And two, check your commitment on everything that you do. Yep. I love it. I completely agree with it. And since we're on this topic of this new beginning here, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that's happening. Um, one of the things that we're going to eventually have to start doing is just start figuring out how to monetize, not monetize, but actually give, we have so much fucking value here at, on the, on the podcast, but pretty soon in the next couple months, year, whatever, we're going to be having like literally energy drink or uh, I'm sorry, not energy drinks, but mocktails and like, I guess maybe energy drinks and coffee, coffee and waters and mocktails and like any beer for sure. And shirts and um, not because I'm getting into the merch business, but because we're trying to expand the brand. Yep. Right. Talk about what, talk, tell me what the vision of I'm a comeback looks like in your eyes in three years. So we're definitely in my eyes. We have a coaching side, which flourishes, saves lives, does amazing. It's fun sometimes. <laughs> um, and then I definitely see an e-commerce side somewhere on the side of it. Now you just said whether that's mocktails and this and this and this and this. I'm not necessarily sure we, we don't have it like narrowed down I see it yet. in my head every day. So I'll let, that's why I want to hear everything. Um, but it's exciting. It's going to be fun. It's going to add a whole nother level of life for us. And we're going to do it together. And I'm really excited for it. No matter what, expanding and learning and growth and all these things and becoming new on levels and or unlocking new levels is what makes our, our relationship thrive in so many different levels. And it's really exciting. So inevitably, I'm really excited. I was walking out of the gym this morning and then we'll let you go because you got to go get the kids. I was walking out of the gym this morning and it hit me. It's, it's all a dream. And I'm not talking about this life that we live in. Maybe this, we were talking about being a simulation. The other day, <laughs> yeah, right? you so and I get pretty deep on our car some crazy <laughs> conversations, but like I was walking out of the gym and I was in a good mood and going to my car, the sun was coming up this morning. It was 30 degrees. So it wasn't super cold. And in my head, I heard it's all a dream. And what, the way I took that and, and comprehended that this morning was like every fucking thing, no matter who you are, if you have a dream, just chase it. Yep. Like you, it literally, like, like literally fucking, I try not to say that word as much because I, I read somewhere that's like a small thinker, but I don't give a fuck what they say. I literally <laughs> I believe that if you have an idea inside your head, you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's someone you love. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's finding that perfect marriage. Maybe it's building a business. Maybe it's, I mean, Phoenix with the NBA. Maybe it's fucking being the best grandmother ever. Maybe it's taking a vacation to Europe. Like whatever truly is in your mind every day. And if it consumes you, think about it while you're on this earth, go for it. One of my favorite things, and this ties into that. And I, it was whatever words you just said, made me remember it was a hip hop preacher mm -hmm. when we were sitting up at the mastermind and we heard him speak and he said something that was so profound to me. It's so simple. He had said, whether you are a lion or whether you are a gazelle, he's like, you wake up in the morning and you just run and you just go. He said, and, and whatever your, the only, the, whatever your dream is, the only difference between Somebody, uh, the only, the only difference with somebody who's going to make it in somebody is the effort that they put in. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to even fucking, you, you could be whatever. As long as your effort reflects, you know, your effort will reflect ultimately whether you're successful or not. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that's, isn't that so true with everything in life? And I automatically went to like the fitness side of it. I was like, my efforts are clearly showing in, in my physique. Your efforts are clearly going to show in your business. Your efforts and your family are clearly going to show in the happiness. And I was like, so simple, so profound, but I think as human, it. I think as human beings, we just try to overcomplicate things. Yeah, I agree. But, <clears throat> but on that, like, like for my dream is like, I know nothing about e-commerce. I know nothing about, <laughs> I know nothing about formulating coffee, mocktails, NA beers. I know nothing about it. I do know how to impact and move men. 
And right. you do know how to not give up. <laughs> and I do know how to not give up. But I do know that I have a foundation <clears throat> and I've been able to touch millions of people's lives. But furthermore, what I do know is that I get up every day with a dream again after what we went through a few days ago. Yep. Because for a while there, even though I'm preaching about dreaming, a lot of the stuff I say was because it's truly inside of me, but I wasn't connected to it. I wasn't yep. connected to God the way I want to be connected with. I wasn't connected with you the way I want to be connected with. Mm -hmm. I wasn't connected with Jade, with Bailey, with Phoenix. I ultimately, wasn't connected with my team. I wasn't connected with Garrett, but most importantly, I wasn't connected with myself. Yep. Right. And you can't be connected to any of those things if you can't connect with yourself. I love it. And when you're connecting with yourself and you're chasing what fucking puts you on fire, you determine the effort, the activity and the time essentially yes. that it'll take for you to get it. No one, there, there is no fucking timeline. I heard an analogy this morning. We have 24 hours in a day, right? <clears throat> what was it? It was, I think it was Phil Jackson back when he played basketball. The coach said to him, he caught him off guard and said, how much time is on the clock? And he read the clock and he goes, or how much time do we have? And he read the time on the clock and the guy goes, no, you get 20, it's 24 seconds, right? That you get to have that ball or whatever. He's like the basketball uh, before you have to get the shot up. And he's like, how much time do we have left? Cause you might get in this game and you don't know how much time you have. You don't know where you're going. How the fuck? I don't want to catch you slipping. Yeah. Well, the reality is we have 24 hours inside of a day. How much time do you have left? We don't know, but you don't want to get caught up in a place where you're fucking going to be slipping every day you get up. If you want to stay focused, you want to stay on task. You want to stay on mission, then maximize and chase the dream because that's how you create new beginnings. Time's not working against you. It's working for you. you Got to make it count. For us personally, like this isn't, the I'm a comeback isn't it. Right. Right. This is not the only thing I'm going to do. This is not the only, yeah. This is not the only thing you're going to do. So. Time also, is on our side. Well, I hope it's on our side. If it's like, not, I'll, I feel I'll, like it is. If it's not, I'll be in the next world figuring it out. And it is what it is. And while I was here on this time, I did what I needed to do to take care of my family, to make sure that you got the, as much fucking knowledge as you can, as much financial resources as you can, and as much right people as you can. Like, that's what a man does. And you are the man. Well, you're a man. My man. That's it for today's episode of the Comeback Couples Podcast. We'll see you guys next week.